Hello everyone, it's 2 p.m. at Wednesday, so that means it's time for what will be the last Coyotes chat of the season for me. Obviously the regular season ended on Sunday for the Coyotes with them not advancing to the playoffs, but sounds like we have an exciting and probably busy offseason ahead for this team, so this is a great opportunity uh, to, to answer your questions one last time, possibly really what lies ahead for this team this offseason. So we have a lot of questions to get to, and I want to try and answer all of them, so let's get right into it with our first question. This one comes from JJ. What will be the draft philosophy for the team this year? Size, skill, speed, how will they use the first round pick? Obviously the draft lottery was held yesterday and the Kaidus are going to be selecting 12th for the second straight year. Last year they went um, with a skillful forward up front in selecting Max Domi who can play center and left wing. Uh, pretty versatile, probably fit you know, where the Kaidus have a hole when he's ready to join this lineup. And I think they'll probably be thinking along the same lines this season. Obviously centers are so valuable and we see that the very high-end top skilled centers are usually stick with the organization that they drafted because they're so valuable. Uh, having said that, usually the philosophy with this first pick is to grab the best player available. So if the best player available at 12th is a defenseman, I could see the Coyotes adding a defenseman even though that's been a position of depth for them recently. Usually though, probably it looks like in this draft is probably going to be a forward at that position. That's probably the best you know, player available. So probably look for them to add some more depth up front, which as we've seen, you know, with what derailed or helped derail the Coyotes at the end of the season, you can never have enough offense. Okay, moving right along here. Not GMDM writes, I'm looking at Hansel as potential trade bait over Yandel. Your thoughts? Um, if I had to pick one or the two, I still think Yandel is probably the more movable piece um, in terms of who the Coyotes feel they could survive without. I still think, despite how injury prone Hansel has become, I still think there's value in that role of having a center of that size who can play a shutdown role in this division looking at the competition he goes up against in the Coyotes face. Still, it probably is very frustrating for management that he continues to get hurt. Um, you know, we saw him lose, I believe, 15 games this season to injury. It's kind of becoming a trend, and I think you know maybe that's a decision they make down the road if Hansel continues to you know to battle these injuries, not be able to play a full season, but. Considering how valuable offensive defensemen have become in this game, how attractive those are, I still think Yandel's probably the more movable piece, especially considering the way that Connor Murphy and Brendan Gormley have come in this season. Probably makes it a little bit easier to move a piece like that, and you probably have a bigger return. Okay, next question comes from Mike K. Tip or GMDM say anything regarding Bissonette coming back? Sounds like he wants to stay if they'll have him, right? He definitely wants to stay if they'll have him. Um, even though he, he was a little bit frustrated this year with his role and how diminished it was, um, he's an unselfish guy. He kind of has that personality to fit in that fourth line role. Um, but really, it's up to the Coyotes whether or not they want to keep him. And so far, they haven't really made a ruling on any of their unrestricted free agents. That was the plan this week, was to actually meet with the pro scouts and start to decide among their seven unrestricted free agents that were on the roster when this season concluded, who do they want to keep. Me, I'm kind of 50-50 right now. I, I could see the Coyotes keeping him for his role, um, but then again, I could also see them wanting to fill that role with someone in the pipeline. Okay, John writes, which of the young D-men that we saw break out this year do you think will be a part of the Coyotes' 23-man roster next year? Which ones do you think the, that uh, GM, DM, and TIP want to play in the AHL for more conditioning? How likely is that we see all of them on the roster next year? I think it's possible, and I think the players that John is referring to that I've identified, obviously, that were there that didn't start the season with the Coyotes were Brandon Gormley, Connor Murphy, and Chris Summers, and I think all did did fairly well in the responsibility they were given at such a critical juncture of the season. Obviously, Murphy came in at some point earlier in the year, but um, you know they were playing hard, heavy minutes at an important time, and they didn't look out of place. So really, I think that we could see them, you know, know here next season um, I really think Murphy is ready I think Gormley is probably gonna play a lot of minutes next year and Summers has, has really used I think the experience of being down in the minors to his advantage 
So I think we could see them all here, and I think there will be spots available for them. Obviously, Derek Morris is an aging veteran. And talking to him when the Coyotes cleaned out their lockers on Monday, it sounds like he knew he wasn't going to be back. And, you know, that's just the fact of his age. He's getting older. They have younger, cheaper options that exist. Um, and obviously being an unrestricted free agent on an expiring contract, you know, it probably is an easy decision for the Coyotes to walk away from that. And, you know, we saw Morris getting scratched in favor of some younger guys, and the Coyotes did well. So I think we could see all of those guys here next season. Moving right along, uh, Guest writes, do you think it may have been a mistake to win the last game against a shorthanded Dallas team? I understand it's always good to win, but there was an opportunity to have a top 10 draft pick, which we passed up. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy here, but, um, you know, I think it was important for the Coyotes to win that game just to not have that losing streak hanging over them entering next season. It would have been an eight-game losing streak. It would have started with that next season. I think it was important for them to just, you know, end that. Don't get calling it the stupid streak. I think it was important for their psyche to end that stupid streak. And I still think at 12 that they'll probably get a decent player. Um, look who they got last year in Max Domi. That's a player that they're very excited about that they think will have a shot on this roster this coming training camp. That's only a year after he was drafted. So I think they'll probably get a credible player at 12. Okay, moving on here. Um, Benton Glendale basically asks, it refers to something that I wrote about yesterday in that LeBlanc, um, President CEO Anthony LeBlanc says that the financial outlook of the team, they'll probably know that by the end of June and he's wondering if they'll make that um, information available to the city of Glendale and, and I'm not sure if, if they have to share that information. Obviously with the money that they're, they're paying back to the city, it seems like logical that they might share their financial information about that but again I'm not sure if they're financially forced to have to share that information. Um, guest writes, with two straight seasons of lackluster performance, what needs to change in order to regain playoff position and possibly make a run? What players are in danger of not being re-signed and who can we target in the offseason to improve this team? Um, I really think, you know, Aside from goaltending, I think you look everywhere else up in front of that position. I think the defending core needs to, to have a new mix. I think inserting the young guys was helpful. I think that energy, that speed and quickness that they play with is important. But I also think what they really missed was that veteran-type player who's just a shutdown guy. He's physical. He can hit. He can block shots. Um, it's just kind of a sandpaper, crusty type of player. So I think that's maybe a player that they can target in free agency. That mold, I don't think they're that expensive. It, it maybe is an older guy in terms of early 30s, mid 30s. Um, you know, a, a younger version of a Derek Morris per se. Um, and up front, I think it's just more options, more talent. Um, Mike Ribeiro came in very heralded to be an offensive, you know, spark plug for this team. It didn't pan out, but I think it's finding more players to surround him with. Um, I think up the middle they're probably pretty set with Ribeiro, Vermette, and Hansel, so it's probably finding some weirs, um, you know, to fill those voids. But it, I think also it'll depend on who they bring back. Um, Rudin Verbata is probably their biggest free agent on the market, and I'm not really sure if he comes back now with how he struggled down the stretch particularly if he gets to July 1 because we see what happens every July 1st that teams with money will overspend to get players and try and you know mix up their team and you know I think someone might overpay for Verbata and kind of put him out of the Coyotes league so um, it'll be interesting to see if the Coyotes get any negotiations done for July 1 on free agents they'd like to keep and I think that might alter their landscape of going into the offseason. Um, guest writes, uh, with Morris likely not returning, the blue line is looking extraordinarily young with the most senior member, Mahalik, at 31. Is there a chance the Oats look to obtain a defensive D-man in, in free agency? If so, any likely candidates are good fits? I think there's a very good chance that they look for that you know, veteran type role to fill maybe Morris's void um, you know, in free agency. But really, I think it's smart to go young and look internally you know, in in part, um, because this is a pretty weak free agent pool. A lot of aging veterans, 
you know, middle to, you know, mid-30s to upper 30s, and just not a lot of good defensive names that stick out. I think probably the best defenseman that will be on the market if he makes it is Matt Niskanen from Pittsburgh, and that's not even a given that he makes it, because obviously the Penguins could re-sign him before then. Um, I actually pulled up a list here to, to try and look at some of those names, and there's just not a lot for defense. Uh, Android Markov from Montreal, but that's a big, heavy contract, and I don't think the Coyotes are willing to spend, you know, four or five million dollars on a defenseman that they see in a role that they probably could have kept with Morris, but they just need a new look. Uh, Merrick Sidlicki, Kimo Timonen, these are all older guys, and so um, they do want someone to fill that role, but I don't think they want to get that old or that pricey. So it really will be interesting to see how they fill out um, that, that void on the blue line. Um, Luke, hi Sarah. In an anticlimactic season for Phoenix, my highlight was Smith's majestic flick down the ice for a beat the buzzer goal. What was your favorite moment? That was a great moment, and that was very that was very cool to see. Um, unfortunately, I didn't see it live. I had to watch it on TV because by the third period, I usually work in the press room and just watch off the TV since I'm on deadline. That one was probably a pretty cool one for me. Um, looking back, I think just some of the some of the games early in the season that they won that will come from behind the shootout wins I think that was probably pretty exciting too just because you're as a writer your adrenaline's going you have a loss written and all of a sudden it turns into a win so those are those are games that are pretty um, you know pretty eventful to cover that one in St. Louis that they won in overtime in November kind of stands out to me um, but yeah Smitty's goal I think was probably the highlight for a lot of people this season. Kate Right. It makes sense to bring Halper and Bissonette and Moss back as relatively inexpensive veteran third and fourth liners on one-year deals that they will be motivated to play better than this season. What do you think happens? Um, you know what? I don't know if these guys come back. I think Halper provided a valuable role. Um, he's cheap. They probably could get him for a one-year deal, but um, I think it really depends if they find a better option in the system that they're ready to give someone else an opportunity. Again, I'm kind of mixed on Bissonette. I, I think it's 50-50 whether he stays or not. But Moss is a player I could see them parting ways for. Um, not saying that there's maybe a better option that they find in free agency, but I think his role, like you mentioned, Kate, a third or fourth liner, they can probably find that in the system and give it to an opportunity, you know, give the opportunity to someone who they feel is better. Or keep in mind that Don Maloney has said that he's like to target 23, 24, 25 year olds, um, you know, in free agency. So maybe that's a player that they look at there. But I think Moss's tenure overall was kind of lackluster, and I think you could probably find a player, you know, provide a similar role, but maybe have more success. Uh, Coyotes asks, do you think the high school resigned for Bado Moss? Um, do you foresee adding talent up front more through trades? or for agency. I just gave my opinion on Moss and asked for Verbata. I'm kind of split. Early on this season when Verbata was playing well, I thought, yes, they have to re-sign this guy. He's very valuable to them. They're going to get it done, obviously, once the season ends, since that's what they decided. Now, I, I think it's risky to let him get to July 1. I think if he gets to July 1, someone's probably going to offer a more lucrative deal. So, you know, I think, you know, if if no one offers him and they're able to get his price down, I think they could work out a deal. Personally, I think it is advantageous to bring Verbata back. You know, he's good for 20 goals. He has chemistry with Hansel, but it's all going to become about price and term. And, and this is kind of the contract we think for a guy at Verbata's age, what he wants. You know, it's his last big contract probably. He wants term. He wants money. And I don't know if the Coyotes are willing to offer that. Uh, but trades, I do think look out for trades. I think especially once we get to draft weekend, I think the Coyotes are very excited and hopeful that they can execute some change to the roster via trade rather than free agent signing. Um, we have a couple couple questions here again about Morris. Uh, since Derek Morris is leaving, there will be no crusty veterans um, left since nearly everybody agreed that the defense needs a more physical defenseman. Who fills that bill? Stone isn't there yet. Murphy tries, but isn't tough enough yet. Do they need another guy to fill the empty Morris, a coin, Roosevelt skates? Definitely. I think I've said that all along this year on these chats is that I really think that they need that role fulfilled. I think Murphy can be that guy eventually, but like you said, he's young. He's still growing into his body. So I think it's up to them to find that person, you know, in free agency. 
Um, another kind of defensive question, does it sound like Chris Summers will be a Coyote? Um, you know, I, I, you know, he's a UFA, which I think people don't understand, but I, I think they could get a deal done. Um, obviously, though, he'll get options elsewhere if he wants to, but he wants to stay here, and I think the Coyotes really were happy with his performance and putting the work in in the minors and then capitalizing on this opportunity. Okay, we have a lot more questions. I'm going to try and rapid fire through them so I get to everyone since this is our last chat of the year. Um, okay, a lot of praise that I'm seeing. Thank you guys. Well, thanks for the hard work this year. I appreciate that. Um, I really, uh, Seth writes, I really like Chris Summers. He was impressive down the stretch. Do you think he resigns with Phoenix? And does the emergence of Connor Murphy and Michael Stone reduce the pressure to resign Derek Morris? I've obviously given my opinion on Chris Summers, but yes, I do think Connor Murphy and Michael Stone still has two years left on a deal. He signed a three year deal last summer. I think that pretty much makes Derek Morris expendable, yes. Um, David wants to know which free agents do you foresee Don Maloney might go after? I'm assuming we desperately need some scoring forwards. Vanek, Molson. I don't think the Coyotes were too hot on Molson. They obviously were intrigued by Vanek at the trade deadline. They might revisit that, but his asking price, he's probably the coop of this free agency. His asking price is probably going to be too expensive. Look at a guy like Alex Hemsky. That was a player the Coyotes were trying to get at the trade deadline. Didn't pan out. He's familiar with the checks, and I think that he could be the fit that works. Speaking of Hemsky, Hamad writes, rumors are that Hemsky will be joining the Coyotes this offseason. Do you think this is the type of player that is needed or a more physical one? I think that Hemsky has that physical edge. He's been hurt throughout his career, but he's really kind of shown that he'll play through that. You know, I think he has a little bit of a rugged edge. He has some size. I think that that could be the type of player that they've been missing in this season. Uh, Art wants to know, is Coach Tippett's gig with Hockey Canada a paid thing or volunteer? Obviously, just hours ago, Tippett was announced as head coach for Team Canada at the World Championships. Volunteer thing, he's selected. It's international play. It's just like being coach of the Olympics, but obviously not that caliber. Um, Sega Genesis fan writes, with the recent trend of popular players becoming president of Hockey Ops, do you think eventually Shane Doan will take on that role for the Coyotes? If there's interest, I think that Doan probably always has a place with this franchise and I think it makes sense for him to transition to a you know, front office role once he's done, but it'd have to be his call and, and you know if the Coyotes have a spot for him, but I think that they probably always will. He's always been such a great ambassador um, you know, for, for the Coyotes. Okay. Assuming Grice leaves, what are your thoughts on who would replace him as the Coyotes' new backup goaltender? Eric wants to know. I really think the Coyotes are going to make a hard push to get Grice. Not a lot of goalies in this free agent pool. Halak is one of them. Tim Thomas. I don't think Byzantine is ready, so I really think Grice is probably the best option. Um, Rob T, do you see the Coyotes retaining any of their free agents? Like I said, I think they go after Grice. I think they're going to maybe you know, test the waters on Verbata and see if something um, can be done. But like Scott wants to know who won't be coming back. I don't think we'll see Morris. I think it'll be difficult for Moss. Um, a couple of the other guys, Halpern, I think is 50-50. Bissonette, 50-50. Chris Summers, I think there's a good chance. So um, it's kind of all over the map there. Um, Korpikoski hasn't seemed to fit the last couple seasons. Any possibility of him being traded? No, I really think they see value in Korpikoski's role. He was injured this year, um, so I think you know once he's healthy, he's got three more years at two and a half million, very reasonable price tag. I think they keep him. Um, JRD writes, obviously we wish the Yotes were in the playoffs, but with the first regular season of the league's realignment in the books, how do you feel it played out? Um, it definitely upped the competition. I really think the Pacific is probably the toughest now in the league, even though Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary didn't make the playoffs, same with Phoenix, but going up against San Jose, Anaheim, LA, as much as they did, it's tough. And you look at that competition in the Central too with Colorado, St. Louis, Chicago, great hockey. I think definitely though now with this realignment the West is definitely the toughest conference but I'm interested to see how this playoffs picture with this brackets kind of pan out obviously playoffs start tonight I was a fan of the old one through eight two through seven type seating but we'll see I think this bracket thing probably plays off the excitement of a March madness type thing so we'll see how that pans out a couple class questions here Max wants to know um, thank you for all the great coverage you've provided 
It seems like Derek Morris is going to play elsewhere next season. What teams do you think would have interest in him, and what role do you think he can contribute at? Um, do you think Tippett will keep the same coaching staff, or could there be some changes? I think the coaching staff is pretty much intact for next year. All those contracts got settled last season, so I think they're all pretty much in place, and ownership has said they're happy with everyone. Um, for Morris, I think, you know, a young team could use a veteran like that. I think of, like, an Edmonton, a Calgary. I, I think there is still value in him, and he says he can still play, and he still wants to play. So I think Morris will find work somewhere. I'm not really worried about him. He'll land on his feet. Um, Kate wants to know, what do you think will happen with Schlemko? He was less than effective this season. I think he's got to get healthy and then compete. He's back to the point where I think he has to compete for a spot on this blue line with Murphy, Gormley, Stone, Summer possibly in the mix might be tough for him um, wrapping it up Newfie Jeff says what else are you going to cover uh, this off season um, probably a little bit of everything maybe a little Diamondbacks Cardinals but I'll definitely keep you updated on Coyotes this off season the draft is coming up in June we have free agency starting in July 1 prospect camp later in July and then guys are going to start to trickle back into town in August so I will be keeping you up to date the whole way Final comment comes from John. On behalf of the fan communities on HF boards and Reddit, we just want to say thank you for your work this year. And I want to say thank you to you guys for participating and communicating with me all season long. I, I enjoy the interaction on Twitter, on our chats, on Facebook. Um, there's a lot of avenues that you can reach me to talk coyotes. Thank you again. This was a fun season to cover this team, mostly because of your interest and your interaction. I really do enjoy providing the information for you um, because I know you appreciate it. So everyone, have a a great off season and a great summer. Like I said, I'm still going to be around covering Coyotes. News happens, it seems, uh, weekly with this team, so there'll be a lot to cover. So follow my Twitter at EZC underscore McClellan and follow at EZC Sports for all the links to the stories. Take care, and we will see you next season.